You guys could see we have the TBS live stream replay in the back. Last video, the TV was completely off. So it's just as level to this. We leveling up every single video, bro. <laughs> so you've been training for six months. You just did your first meet. You hit a 350 dot and you decided you're gonna take all your chips and push them to the center of the table because you are now all in on powerlifting. You're gonna be doing this full time. It's done, you decided, and there's no turning back. If that sounds like you, then you've come across the right video because welcome to the complete guide on how to make money as a powerlifter. Now, but in all seriousness, when I first got into the sport like eight years ago in like late 2015, everyone around me at the time who had been in the sport for a few years said that there was no money in powerlifting. And back then they were 100% right, more or less. And even now they kind of still right. But I know many people, including myself, who've been blessed with the opportunity to make a full-time income off of powerlifting. And what I've found is that there are seven main ways that people really earn a living in this sport. In this video, I've compiled those seven main ways and I've also designed a custom-built ranking system. And by design a custom-built ranking system, I mean I came up with this like an hour ago while I was on my walk. <laughs> and that ranking system is based on a couple different things. So for each one of these ways, we're gonna talk about the maximum earning potential. We're gonna talk about the prerequisites and how difficult it is to get into. So sort of like what you need to have in place before you could actually use this as a viable income source. We talk about the time for money exchange. So how much time you put in versus how much money you get out. Sort of like the ratio there. And then we'll give it an overall score and talk about the overall pros and cons of that particular way of earning an income as a powerlifter. As a caveat to this entire list before we get into it, powerlifting is very based around social media, right? Meaning that a lot of the ways that I'm gonna list out here will be social media dependent. Now, as a quick caveat to that caveat, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need 10, 50, or 100,000 followers before you earn your first dollar from powerlifting. As a matter of fact, when I first started like actually earning income as a powerlifter, and I actually got to a point where I was earning a full-time income as a powerlifter, I only had like maybe like 4,000 followers on Instagram. So you don't necessarily need to, you know, just have like the world of followers, but social media does make everything more potent. It allows you to reach a wider audience, allows you to cast a bigger net, um, and you just become more valuable for companies, brands, different things like that which we'll get into, particularly when we talk about the prerequisites for each one of these things. So what I'll do is I'll start with the one that is just the least social media dependent and just kind of take it from there. All right, so way number one is winning high level meets. This is the purest form of making money as a powerlifter. On the untested side of powerlifting, this has been a thing for a very, very long time. You've had guys like John Hack who have made high five figures if not into the six figures in a single calendar year just simply doing meets and on the tested side of powerlifting we're really seeing this progress um, very rapidly over like the last few years so you have things like the pro series you have things like sheffield where lifters are really getting paid now although i would say this is the simplest way to make money as a powerlifter it's also very difficult and i'll talk about that particularly in the prerequisites but yeah, this is the purest way to make money um, as a powerlifter. Now, I guess we could talk initially right here about the maximum winning potential and get into the, the ranking system. With the Sheffield, um, you've had guys like Jesus Oliveras and Evie Corrigan, who I believe walked away with somewhere in the range of like forty to $45,000 from that one single meet. Um, as I said, you've also had guys like John Hack and other like high level untested powerlifters who've made very, very high figures, um, high, high five figures um, in like a single year, just simply, you know, winning meets. But on average, I would say a very high level competitive powerlifter would probably be looking at something like, I don't know, maybe 10 to $20,000 per month, right? 
Um, but because we're talking about maximum earning potential here, even though you can go past 50,000, I would say to even be remotely realistic with it and not paint like a, um, you know, like a wild picture, I would say that the maximum earning potential, um, simply for just from winning high level meets, is gonna be somewhere around $50,000 a year. Now, powerlifting is like a really rapidly growing sport and maybe just like what, three, yeah, probably just three years ago, um, in the tested side of powerlifting, um, that maximum earning potential would have probably been like 5K. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, you, you had like some very, very small like meets which were given out like cash prizes, like the Arnold and stuff like that. Um, but with the Pro Series, with Sheffield, um, that has like exploded very quickly. And I do personally see that trend continuing on. So maybe by, you know, next year, this video is outdated and the maximum earning potential there is, you know, genuinely maybe in the hundreds of thousands as opposed to just like, you know, in mid five figures. But, you know, to be realistic and to, to apply to the present day, I would say 50,000 is a realistic max if you're just at the peak of your game, right? Um, in terms of the prerequisites and how difficult it is to get into. Now, this is the main problem with this way of making money. Because there aren't that many meets which give out a significant cash prize, and because there are so many powerlifters and it's become so competitive, this is tough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, powerlifting, back when I had first gotten into it in 2015, was genuinely more like, all right, cool. Whoever is the person who cares the most and whoever is the person who wants to, like, jump on top of all their variables, um, sleep, nutrition, uh, you know, just, like, recovery, everything like that, would probably be the person who would win, considering that they had decent genetics, right? Now... I would say very recently, within the last like three years, things have really turned around. It's gotten to a point where it's so competitive that I do believe that we are seeing, you know, some top 0.0001% genetics in the entire sport actually rising to the top. So, you know, it's getting to a point where the prerequisites here is mainly going to boil down to good genetics. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, it is very tough to say like, oh, well, how difficult it is to get into because for most people it's gonna be impossible, you know? And I'll touch again on that in the overall pros versus cons, but yeah, a prerequisite is gonna be good genetics and then obviously just simply, you know, working hard and, and everything like that. But yeah, that's no longer just enough in my opinion. In terms of the time for money exchange, um, this one is a little bit tricky to see just because um, it's an interesting situation where even with cream of the crop genetics, right, you're the best of the best in terms of like your genetic capability and you work extremely hard, it's still going to be a situation where for the first one, two, three or even like five years, you earn nothing <laughs> because, you know, you just simply haven't had the time in to be rise to the top to be one of those people who wins these cash prizes, right? And then after that, as you're in your peak, you're just simply going to be like winning, 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 winning. So it's going to be like, oh, like let's say five years of nothing and then five years of everything. Um, so the time for money exchange here is a little bit different to everything else because it's not, it's not even going to be like a, a, a slow snowball. It's just going to be like nothing, everything. So you guys could draw your own conclusion about that. And then in terms of the overall pros versus cons and giving this a score. So the overall pros is that if you're watching this, more than likely you're very interested in powerlifting, you, you, you love the sport, you're passionate about it, right? So that means you were gonna put in your all anyway and you were going to try to be the best you could be anyway, regardless of cash prizes or not. I don't think most people in the sport of powerlifting for money, I, I don't think so, right? So in terms of the overall pros is that it's the, the purest way of making money as a powerlifter. In terms of the overall cons is that you aren't necessarily in control of your genetics and you could work just as hard as someone else, but if they have the genetics to be, you know, 50 kg stronger than you on total, then they will be 50 kg stronger than you on total and they will win. You know, so I would give this a 
5 out of 10, just because for a very select few group of people, this is a 10 out of 10 way, and then for everybody else, this is a 0 out of 10 way of making money. So come together, you get the um, average of that, 5 out of 10. All right, so way number two is online coaching. This is very near and dear to my heart. Um, this is the first way that I ever earned a single dollar from powerlifting. And, uh, you know, it's still like my main income source in powerlifting is online coaching. Online coaching is, I think is, is, is sort of like the, uh, almost like the bread and butter or like the backbone of powerlifting. It's something that so many people do. It's something that so many people have found as a sustainable income source for them. Um, it's also something that a lot of people have failed at, by the way. But, you know, I, online coaching is, is really, I don't know, I, I think it's probably going to be the most popular one on this list just because the barrier for entry is so low and the upsides are pretty high depending on, you know, like, you know, if you meet the prerequisites here. So let me hop straight into the, um, into the uh, ranking system so that that way you guys can get an understanding of like how online coaching like really um, stacks up against everything else on this list. So the maximum earning potential of an online coach. Now, when I speak here, I'm gonna talk from experience and then also just from, you know, like talking to other online coaches and just simply um, from like a mathematical perspective um, looking at it is just a simple equation of, you know, how much you charge per month multiplied by your number of clients, right? Um, so most online coaches, including myself, are going to cap out at somewhere between 40 to 60 clients, right? That is, if you're really pushing it, you can get up to 60 and 40 is manageable for most people. Now, there are specific people who take on less clients and charge higher. So there may be around like 30 clients, um, one of them being uh, most notably Steve DeNovi. And there are some people who take on more clients and charge less or even the same as the people in the mid range. Um, and that is, you know, more or less their strategy, but they like really, really going hard with it. So they could get up to like 70 or maybe even 80 clients, which I do not recommend that will ruin your life if you actually give a good service but yeah <laughs> right um and then the average cost of online coaching is going to be somewhere around 200 dollars if it is this person is like a premium reputable coach right if this person is just starting off then obviously that's not going to be the case and if this person is one of those like super premium coaches who doesn't um have um like you know take on that many clients then it might be actually even a little bit more expensive than that, you know, 225, 250, 275, somewhere around there, right? So looking at all of those numbers and finding the averages of those, I would say the maximum earning potential for an online coach is a fairly wide range, but it's gonna be somewhere between eight to $15,000 per month, right? Um, as I said, that's a fairly wide range. It's almost like double the initial amount. Um, that 8 to 15 range but that's where most online coaches who've reached their like cap and limit are gonna cap out at at this current point in time the reason why I said at this current point in time is just because um, one of the main things with online coaching when it comes to pricing is that you need to be competitive right so you can't necessarily price yourself out of the market and just say oh yeah well my coaching is four hundred dollars a month when you know there are other excellent coaches who are charging you know 200 to 25 250 um it's just not gonna do well for your business um unless that's your strategy right um so you're gonna be somewhere between that eight to fifteen thousand dollars per month now to some of you that might sound great but when i get into the overall pros versus cons you would hear why that is actually um a bad thing right prerequisites on how difficult is it to get into in terms of how difficult it is to get into, it is not difficult to get into at all. Um, it's very easy to start online coaching. As I said, I was making a full-time income with just 4,000 followers. And this method is very not social media dependent. So when I had just 4,000 followers, I posted and I said that, you know, I'd put everything in place and I was uh, looking to take on clients. And within that one week, I got 12 clients starting off 
and I was charging 100 dollars. Now, that is not necessarily a full-time income, but it's actually, you know, kind of like amazing uh, to be able to go from nothing to 12 pay paying clients within just simply a one-week period. Um, it, it, that, that's why I think online coaching is so popular. Now, in terms of the prerequisites, this is where it gets a bit sticky. You need to have experience in the sport, and you need to have an actual knowledge of how to apply that experience to other people, um, and just, just simply a knowledge of programming and how programming changes from person to person. This is something that builds over time, and I'll snowball this right into the um, time for money exchange, is that when you are just starting off, the time for money exchange is gonna be very trash. Right when I was first first starting off, before that whole twelve client thing that I told you guys about, I was charging maybe like sixty dollars a month for online coaching, and just simply building up my reputa uh, reputation like that and building up my experience level like that. Right, because at the time I'd already been lifting myself for about like five years powerlifting, um, so I had experience. But learning how to apply that experience to other people and learning how to apply your knowledge of programming to actual real world situations is a massive prerequisite if you're gonna make this an actual um, viable source of income long term, right? Because it's, it's like, you know, if you have, let's say 10,000 followers, you're watching this, you, po you post that, hey, yeah, you know, I'm doing online coaching. Yes, people will hit you up, but they will leave and they will uh, talk shit about you uh, on, online if it is you don't provide a good service. Um, you don't know what you're doing, they don't get progress, or they get injured, all these things, right? So it is fairly risky, and starting off small, charging almost nothing, or charging absolutely nothing at all, and just simply building up your experience is important, so that's where the time for money exchange um, comes into play, it is like a snowball that builds up. Um, and in terms of one of the prerequisites as well is that you have to care, <laughs> right? You genuinely have to care, so it's like, if you hear eight to fifteen thousand dollars a month, and you're like, "All right, but sounds good," and you're just gonna hop straight into it, that's cool. But the the issue there is that if you do not actually care about your clients and the progress that they make, the work is going to become, you know, tedious. It's gonna get to a point where it actually like you actually feel like you're suff suffering while doing coaching. And I know coaches who have complained to me about things like that, right? Now, in terms of the overall pros versus cons, right? And this is why I said I was gonna talk about that like eight to $15,000 a month. This snowball of online coaching, which starts off really small and it builds up to that eight to $15,000 a month range, it stays that size. <laughs> that is one of the cons, is that that snowball stays that size regardless of how much you continue to roll it um, after that. The reason why it stays that size is because you're limited by two constraints here, um, both on like the X and Y axis if you wanna like visualize this, or maybe I might do like an overlay, probably not, but you know, maybe, right? You have your number of clients and you have the amount that you charge. Your number of clients is limited by the amount of work you could do, and the amount you charge is limited by people's perceived value of you, and then also the marketplace conditions. So it's like, you can't be charging 200 and then it's every month, all right, cool, I'd be taking an extra $25. Within, you know, one year, you would have no clients, right? <laughs> and then the same thing with taking on more clients is that the work is actually very difficult. A lot of people think online coaching is easy. It is not. So, not to ramble on too long, I can make an entire video about this, but in terms of the overall pros versus cons, online coaching is a great way to make money. It is also very fulfilling if you actually care about it. You get to learn a lot about the sport. Um, you know, it's very low barrier to entry, everything like that. Cons, the time for money exchange is good, but there are better ones on this list. And two, it could become very, very tedious. And you know, there is a cap. So, but in terms of the score, the pros heavily, heavily outweigh the cons if you know what you're doing. So I would give online coaching an eight out of 10. All right, so way number three on this list. Before I even mention the name, I genuinely think that this way is what a lot of people see as the holy grail. <laughs> genuinely, the holy grail 
of making money as a powerlifter, and that is sponsorships. <sighs> so many people, when they're just starting off um, in powerlifting, in strength training, or even just like, you know, in fitness and trying to build an audience online, sponsorships are the main thing that they are like aiming for. They want to be sponsored um, by X company or all these different things. I'm here to tell you, not all sponsorships are created equal, right? Now, ignoring the fact that not all sponsorships are created equal because of the company that you are actually going to be sponsored by, let's talk about the three types of sponsorships and I will break down each way kind of like against the ranking system and, and talk about it. Um, but yeah, here are the three tiers of sponsorships and what they entail. Tier number three is a product-based sponsorship. Tier number two is a commission-based sponsorship. And tier number one is a salaried sponsorship. So three to one is product, commission, salary. Product-based sponsorship is where the company simply gives you product in exchange for promotion. You get no money. Commission-based is where the company gives you product and you also maybe get like a discount code or a support link and you get uh, commissions based on what sales you do. And then uh, um, salary is where you probably have elements of the other two. So you could probably have a discount code or, and you probably get free product as well. But they also pay you something monthly fixed on a contract which you get regardless of how much you sell or promote or anything like that. Obviously you have stipulations in the contract, but um, you understand what I mean. Tier number one is what you are aiming for when it comes to sponsorships. Um, and this is why I say not all sponsorships are created equal. So the main tier that I'm gonna be comparing to the ranking system here is tier number one. And that is the salaried option. That is the one you wanna aim for. Just as like a quick breakdown before I get into the ranking system, with these three tiers, more than likely they're gonna be very, very, very heavily based on your social media. Not just your number of followers, but your engagement, your general influence, everything like that, right? But to give you a general broad idea, just so you have an understanding, if you are somewhere between that like one to 10,000, um, maybe even up to like 15,000 follower range, companies are gonna be uh, offering you that product-based sponsorship. So more than likely, you're not gonna have any like income or anything like that, it's just gonna be products. Anywhere between 10 to 30,000 um, followers, maybe even up to like 40,000 followers, is where a company is gonna be offering you that um, commission-based sponsorship. Um, so you have your discount code, everything like that, and free product. And then anything like 30,000 plus, 40,000 plus, depending again on your influence and depending on, um, I guess, your status in this world, how good of a powerlifter are you? Um, is where you're gonna be offered that like salaried option, right? So that's just to give you an example there. Because the reality of it is that, you know, these are companies are businesses, right? So they wanna see a return on their investment. So it's like, you know, imagine this scenario. Let's say you are a world champion powerlifter, but you only have a thousand followers. That's cool, <laughs> you know, like the association of your brand with them being a world championship is, it, uh, you, you being a world champion with their brand is cool, but they need to make money. So it's like, they can't give you a thousand dollars a month if, you know, <laughs> right. But anyway, talking about the, uh, how the way number one, that salaried option, how it compares to the ranking system, right? Maximum winning potential. This is very difficult to say just because powerlifting crosses over with fitness. And I genuinely know a lot of fitness influencers who make easily six figures, high six figures, mid six figures, um, you know, doing uh, like having sponsorship opportunities and, and being like salaried athletes. So it is very difficult to say. Um, but I would say for the average powerlifter, not like, you know, you're not, if you're not the next C-bomb or something like that, um, I would say maximum earning potential from sponsorships because you could get multiple companies and stuff like that, you're probably looking at capping off around 250,000. 
and that is being very ambitious. But again, we're talking about the maximum inner potential here. We're going to say 250,000, which is excellent, right? In terms of the prerequisites and how difficult it is to get into, social media needs to be popping. <laughs> like, if you don't have that influence, you cannot sell their product. And if you cannot sell their product, they do not necessarily care to, to be associated with you because there's no benefit for them. Point blank period, right? Um, time for money exchange. Honestly, again, this is going to depend on like how many followers you have, just simply because, uh, based on the fact that if you have 100,000 followers, it could genuinely be that you post a story saying, hey, buy this, it's launching today, and you make a few hundred, if not a few thousand, if not over $10,000 just over that one story, you know? Um, it's a very, very powerful method, but it does take time to build that audience, um, and you need to stand out. So it is pretty uh, difficult in terms of, you know, like actually being that guy. Um, but yeah, it, the time for money exchange could be very, very good. Um, and again, it's sort of like a snowball effect. It's less at the start because you're doing the same work um, and you're getting lesser results. But the work is, the, is constant throughout the journey. And at the end, the results are just, you know, far out where they work. So in terms of a score, um, I would score this very, very high. Um, honestly, it's probably like a 9 out of 10 way of making money um, as a powerlifter. Way number four of making money as a powerlifter is selling your own training program slash digital products, right? This is very, very lucrative if you have the prerequisites met. But this is very, very lucrative. Honestly, it could even be more lucrative than um, sponsorships. I'll get into that with the maximum inner potential. But it is very, very lucrative. Basically, what this is, is let's say, you know, you launch like a, a training app. By the way, we have the Shrink Studio app coming soon. Um, but yeah, you launch like a training app. You have your programs, whether it be Excel or PDF. Um, you could have like a meal plan. You Many different like things. Basically, you're sharing your knowledge digitally with your audience, right? Um, let me hop straight into the ranking system on this one so I could break it down sort of like individually. In terms of the maximum inner potential, with digital products, most of the money that you earn is going to be profit. That is simply because, let's say I do like a training program and I'm marketing it like on social media for free, like on my page. Any purchase that happens is going to be 99% profit just because it costs me nothing to ship that. It is easily downloaded, everything like that, right? So the maximum earning potential here is gonna be based on like your audience size. It's gonna be based on kind of like how many like units you can move per day, per week, per month, uh, etc. But from my experience selling training programs, because we've been doing training programs now for the last three years, from my experience from talking to other people who have their own training programs, apps, different things like that, you could easily make six figures per year selling training programs if <laughs> they are good, if they are good, right? So let me talk about the prerequisites, guys, I'm stressing if they are good, right? Um, prerequisites are going to be knowledge. The reason why digital products sell, even though there is no cost to the... Um, you know, person making them, is because they have inherent value. And that inherent value comes in the way of knowledge and information that the person themselves would, would not otherwise know or have access to. So, for example, if it is you just simply write a trash program on a PDF, it's like, oh yeah, four by 10 bicep curls, X, Y, Z. You could probably sell a couple programs, but you're not gonna have a long-term sustainable business just because people will realize this is not groundbreaking information. You'd have no word of mouth sales. You would have no, uh, people would not do any reviews. If they do, they would probably be negative. Um, different things like that, right? And, you know, quick plug for like all programs. One of the things which like has made us sell programs so consistently over the last three years is the fact that we made them different. Our programs are highly customizable. Um, 
you know, they're not just like cookie cutter templates where, you know, you, you get like a static PDF and you have to work out your percentages and your RIR and stuff like that. It's all very dynamic, not to mention all the effort that we put into it, you know, making like videos and everything like that. So it's like, this could be very lucrative, but you need to have the knowledge and experience that people want access to um, in order to get. Another prerequisite is going to be a good social media following. You know, like if you have the world of knowledge and the world of experience and nobody knows about the, um, the, the programs, then it's like you're not going to sell much. So it's like if it is you have a lower following, you probably honestly want to look more into something like online coaching uh, just because it is more lucrative per customer that you get as opposed to selling training programs where, you know, it's only going to be, you know, anywhere between the range of like 25 to $75 per program, depending on, on, on what you what you sell, right? Um, so you need that social media following and you need knowledge that people want access to. You need that experience. Um, that's big, right? In terms of the time for money exchange, the time for money exchange on training programs is probably the best out of everything on this list, right? And I was actually like double checking this just to make sure. The reason why it's probably the best is that when you create a good product that people actually want, people will go and buy this product based on referrals from friends, based on, you know, coming across posts on Instagram, these different types of things. So it's like, it gets to a point where you almost don't even need to directly promote your program unlike with sponsorships and stuff like that, you even need to promote it. Obviously, you will still promote your programs, but you don't necessarily even need to. So that's why I said it's even like better than sponsorships, just because it is it, like almost like autopilot when you create a good program. I keep stressing that because that is just like the biggest prerequisite. I've seen people get destroyed. Bruh. <laughs> I've seen people put out programs and get ripped apart by the community. So it's like, it's not for the faint of heart. You need, <laughs> please know what you do. Like, don't just hear me saying this and like, oh yeah, six figures, oh yeah, um, you know, time for money. Nah, bruh. <laughs> you, need, you need to know what you're doing, you know what I mean? Um, and in terms of the overall pros versus cons and giving this a score, as I said, it's, very, it's actually very easy to get into, but um, in, actually, in order to actually keep selling these programs and have a viable income source, you need to have a following, you need to know what you're doing, you need to create a good product, everything like that. Um, but the pros are the time for money um, exchange and the maximum inner potential for sure. Um, but in terms of giving this a score, I would probably put it as like just slightly less than sponsorships, just because with sponsorships, you really don't even need to know what you're doing. You just kind of need to have people like you and come and have a following. With this, you need to have people like you have a following and you need to know what you're doing. So I'll probably give programs at 8.5, just a little bit better than coaching, in my opinion, but not as good as sponsorships for the average person. So, yeah. Now, way number five of making money as a powerlifter is starting your own business. Most times it's gonna be a clothing based business because um, I just think it's like the easiest thing to actually start. But you could do other things as well. You could start like a shoe company, you could start a equipment company, you do like belts, um, you know, knee sleeves, things like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's many different things that you could do, but clothing just happens to be the easiest. Um, just because, you know, when it is you're hopping into like the um, equipment space, you're competing against companies like you know, SPD, um, you know, these different companies, you're competing um, against like Avancus, One Hun, um, all these different like shoe companies, Notorious Lifts, when it is you're getting into the shoe space. So to actually come in with like a good product there, you need to actually like be groundbreaking and competitive, kind of like Avancus was. Um, so you can't just like launch something that looks cool. It needs to actually be functional in those spaces. So I guess I'll talk more so about like clothing based businesses. Um, but yeah, this is, it is difficult to do. So I'll talk about the, the ranking system like straight away here. The maximum in potential on this is difficult to say. The reason why I say that is because this 
probably has the most variance of any of these things on this list just because a business is something that could genuinely take on a life of its own at some point so for example you know like everybody knows like russell or he when he first started um get better today i was following him on uh youtube and i saw his journey of like packaging out his own stuff and like shipping out orders and everything like that until the point where he is where he is at today with that company right so the, the maximum earning potential on this i can't even put a number on it because you also have companies like Inaka and all these companies that start off super small and start off almost like just like drop shipping stuff but then they get to a point where they actually like do custom make stuff and yeah it just goes crazy so i'm not going to put a number on this but just know that it is higher than any other thing that you've seen on this on this list here um in terms of the prerequisites and how difficult it is to get into if you're starting a non-clothing company it is going to be very difficult to get into if you are starting a clothing based company it's probably not going to be that difficult to get into but you do need a social media following to actually like market this stuff and you do also need some level of creativity to make things that really stand out it is very very competitive um even though clothing is less competitive i would say than um you know equipment or uh shoes and and stuff like that because clothing is subjective it it is still very competitive because you have so many players you have as i said um you know get better today in aka um you know even like equipment companies do clothing um then you have the big players like Nike, Adidas, Gymshark, all these different things so it's like yeah doing clothing and and scaling that up is not an easy task um but it is you know obviously like very rewarding but actually getting into it is not very difficult but actually building it up is where the difficulty comes into place right in terms of the time for money exchange um again if you do manage to build this into a massive business i would say this is again something that snowballs um and unlike online coaching i would say this is something that snowballs massively where that snowball does not have a limit in size right so for example a company like gymshark they also started off just you know with um i think the guy's name is um Ben or something like that. I think he started off with just simply him packing out orders and then it grew to him and his friends and then he eventually grew Gymshark to what it is now. So, yeah, this is definitely like a more like a snowball in terms of the time for money exchange. Um so, yeah, it's difficult to, to even like really wrap your mind around what the time for money exchange would be like at any given like point or average of what it would be like. Um but in terms of the overall pros versus cons um as i said the pros are that there is no cap um and the pros are as well as that clothing is very subjective so it is easy to get into if you have a good idea and it is you know you know readily available you have companies that can print for you and and these different types of things like that but in terms of the cons is just the competitiveness like starting up business in powerlifting every space is more or less like really dominated heavily by some massive company and um you know actually breaking into that is is going to be tough <laughs> i would say this way in general i would probably give this uh um probably give this a 6 out of 10 so it's not quite as low as like when in high level meets because i do know like some you know lifters who aren't necessarily like super high level who have started their own companies and have seen you know success with it but at the same time for most people i don't think this is going to be viable um which is why i think a lot of like influencers go the route of simply getting a sponsorship from a bigger company and just being a part of that as opposed to going the route of like starting their own thing starting your own thing is really like for a select few people i do believe way number 6 is social media and this is social media in its purest purest form so things like youtube and getting paid directly from that based on views um instagram reels getting paid from that based on views um i believe like tiktok and snapchat and stuff like that they were paying as well but more or less just getting paid directly from social media 
This is honestly a terrible way of making money as a pole lifter, like hands down. Um, I do know some guys who use it as just like supplemental income, just to cover the cost of them creating content itself. But in terms of like actually making money like this as a pole lifter, it is possible. <laughs> possible is the word that I would use, but I don't know how viable it is really for, you know, just kind of like the the average Joe more or less, just because powerlifting is a smaller sport. So even like my YouTube channel, for example, which you're watching right now, it isn't like monetized or anything like that. And I probably don't care to monetize it just because, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> you know? So um, in terms of the maximum earning potential here, it's probably gonna be low. So it's probably gonna be in like the low five figures per year. Um, as I said, it's probably gonna be just enough to actually cover the cost of creating content. In terms of the prerequisites, um, no real prerequisites to actually get into it, but in terms of actually building up that audience, that's where it does become difficult. In terms of the time for money exchange, um, yeah, the, the time for money exchange is probably trash. <laughs> like, if you actually just watch it like that. And in terms of the overall pros versus cons, um, yeah. Pros are that obviously, you know, you're going to create the content anyway. And the reason why I create the content anyway is for the other reasons. If you start your own business, you want to be able to market that. If you're selling your own uh, training programs or digital products, you want to be able to market that. Sponsorships, you're marketing that. Online coaching, you're marketing that. Everything you are marketing, right? So um, in terms of actually like doing the content, you were going to do it anyway. So I guess just simply getting paid off of it is good. Um, but in terms of the cons, it's just like the money is not going to be there. Like doing this alone is not necessarily going to be the um, sort of like the, you know, the, 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 the cream of the crop, just like full time six figure income kind of thing. Like I, I can't see that with powerlifting only, you know, um, maybe it's possible. Maybe I'm just like close minded. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Right. Um, so in terms of giving this actual score, I would probably put this at like a 2.5 out of 10. And way number seven, or the final way of making money as a powerlifter that I found, is the honorable mentions, right? So this is live streaming and books. The only reason I mentioned these two is just because I didn't want to leave them out, and I do know two lifters who have done these right so with live streaming i know ben rice um he's just like an og 105 kg power lifter um he was one of the first guys i knew that pulled like 800 very consistently um in the gym and he has like his whole thing on twitch i think he literally does that full time like just that full time and he does like lifting and video games and stuff like that so he it is possible, but he's the only person I know who does that, like actually like full time and earns like, you know, significant money from it. So yeah, this one is even like less like of a percentage than within le high level meets because there's only one person that I personally know of. And then the next one is books. So um, I only know one person who actually did like a book book for real, like an actual book, like you print it out and sell it. Um, and that is Leah Boval. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention those two. I cannot speak anything about the maximum inner potential prerequisites, time for money exchange, overall pros with scan, because I have no idea. None. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so these were basically the seven ways that I've found that people actually make money um, powerlifting. Um, yeah, I still had the meat playing in the background, I assume. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, so overall, uh, it is definitely possible to make money as a powerlifter. Um, as I said, I know many people who do it uh, personally, and me, myself, I've been doing it now for the past four years. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys learned anything from this video. If you guys want to help me make money as a power lifter, you can check out the links down below to Avanka Shoes um, and the SBD gear and my coaching and training programs and everything else like that. Um, so yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.